and 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 everyone that I ever hired that I've hired, I think in my history, I've had this conversation with them. I want to make sure that this is the best job you have ever had. And they look at me like, I've never had anybody say that. And I said, well, it's completely selfish on my part because if I make it the best job you've ever had, I don't have to worry about turnover. I don't have to worry about you showing up. I don't have to, you know, it eliminates so many problems. That was my way of not being the arsonist. Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College Weston. Welcome to another edition of our Life West Leadership Line. Today, all the way from the Panhandle in Florida, this is a vacation spot. We got Dr. Ray Foxworth with, with us. Ray, good to see you, my man. Thank you so much, and uh, welcome for or good to see you from the Redneck Riviera, <laughs> wherever you are. I don't know, yeah, man. wherever I am, yeah, outside of Destin or wherever you know. Which, um, but but Ray, and the, the, for the audience, a lot of you know Ray, and if you don't know Ray, you're gonna know Ray. Ray uh, has a long history in chiropractic. First, he's a Cairo kid, you know, a mom and dad, I believe both, right, chiropractors. Yeah. Graduated, which we'll talk about. Graduated in uh, in uh, 1985 from Cleveland College in Kansas City. Uh, that gives him about 39 years uh, coming up on that big 4-0. Um, immediately went down to Mississippi. That's his hometown, his home state, I should say, and practiced in Flowood um, in a huge clinic over there. Um, and then uh, just, you know, just started rocking and rolling in chiropractic. I mean, I'm just going to let you know some of the things he did. You know, he was the first staff chiropractor at the VA uh, um, center, uh, which is huge. You know, very first chiropractor there giving chiropractic to our VA. Um, he was a, the first chiropractic appointed to the Mississippi uh, State Board of Health, which is Cool. I mean, that's different than like the chiropractic board. This is the state board of health, right? Um, and later appointed into, as the chair of that first chiropractor, you know, which is really, really huge. Um, yeah. And, you know, he was uh, he was the chair of uh, of the Cairo Summit and also sits on the board of the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. And he's on the executive committee of that and the executive committee of the Futures for Chiropractic Task Force and um, has done amazing things with started a company uh, called Cairo Health USA uh, that is doing amazing things in the profession and um, just, you know, putting money back in the profession, sponsoring students, things like that, uh, just doing some really great stuff. And now he's got a, he's, we're going to also talk about a, a new operating system that he developed called EOS. It's an entrepreneurial operating system. It's a software program for our brains uh, as entrepreneurs. And, you know, he started a, an, an AI program. So just really cool stuff, Ray. And I'm, I know we won't have time to dive into everything, but we will get into, into a lot of it. So, Hey brother, listen for for the beginning. Just for just take a just take a minute to share. You know, obviously both your parents are chiropractors. And, you know, what were yeah, your roots? I'll, yeah. Well, let, let me correct something uh, before Please. I didn't come up with the EOS system. That's actually the entrepreneurial operating system is uh, what Gino Wickman put together in his book called Traction. And, and it really is how to run. I don't care if it's your family, your business, your company, whatever. Um, it, it, it's a way of looking at your business and making sure that you got all your systems and all your data. Uh, anyway, just wanted to clarify that. So my journey in chiropractic, my mom, um, only job she ever had was as a chiropractic assistant until she and my dad divorced, my uh, biological dad. And she went off to to um, Indianapolis, Indiana, and went to Bebout Chiropractic College. Um, and as I tell the story, I started chiropractic college in 1965, and I graduated from Cleveland in 1985. <laughs> I wasn't a slow learner. It was the fact that my mom was a vet tech during the day and went to chiropractic college at night. And so guess who was sitting in the class? Yeah. Uh, so it took, it took me a while to, to get my degree. She graduated what year? Ooh, she graduated in '67. Okay, and then and then you and and then her husband, your stepdad, my, my whatever. Stepdad, my stepdad went after uh, she did. He was one of the last graduates coming out of of uh, Bebout College. Uh huh. And then, I don't know then if you remember that time or not? But I don't. I'd be honest with you, I don't. 
And I, yeah. you know, I'm just I'm I think fascinated. you got absorbed by National or or one of the other colleges in the Indianapolis area. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then and then they went to Mississippi, right? Yeah, they went to Yazoo City, Mississippi. For those of you that recognize that that town, that's the home of Zig Ziglar. It was actually uh actually his sister was my next door neighbor and i grew up with his nephews and got to meet him a few times and uh quite an impactful man nice nice i'll never forget this man one of my patients i was on a plane with him i'm sorry he came into the office to get checked and he goes man goes dr ron i was just on the plane with this guy amazing man you know i was sitting in first class and he sat next to me and i go he goes have you ever heard of a guy named zig ziglar Mm -hmm. i said john of course i heard of zig ziglar you know and he goes this guy was just fantastic. Anyways, the guy I was talking to, my, you know, John Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine now the two of them sitting on a plane oh together? That'd be, that'd be crazy. Anyways, so, so, and then you went through that and you did, you know, and, you know, obviously you became a chiropractor, right? And went right off to uh, Flowood that's right outside of Jackson, Mississippi and kind of yeah. like your home, but, you know, you did really, really well. And you know, all the other things that you did, like, you know, with, uh, you know, with Cairo Health, you know, what, 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 just give the thirty the thirty second rundown of Cairo Health USA. So Cairo Health was born out of a, a, a what what I refer to as my worst day in practice. Um, I was taking care of, and I'm, I'm dead serious. Um, yeah. I was taking care of this lady and her family. They didn't have insurance at the time, and of course, I did what every doctor does. I had my cash fee. You know, like Mary, Larry Marks used to talk about, you have your cash fee, your workers' comp fee, your mother, father, sister, brother fee. Well, I kind of had all that crap <laughs> yeah. back then. And so I was charging, you know, maybe $35 a visit. Um, fast forward, she's involved in an auto action. I build out my normal fees, you know, uh, to the insurance carrier. And a few weeks later, she comes in, I walk in the room, and there she is and got this long face. And I'm going like, oh, crap, something's wrong. And she literally gets up, she said, she walks over to me, taps me in the chest, says, Doc, I saw what you charge the insurance companies, and I know what you charge me. It's guys like you ripping off insurance companies that keep me from affording care. And I was speechless for about 10 seconds, which is a long time for me. Yeah. I said, no, it's guys like me that bend over backwards to help folks like you, but I made a horrible mistake. I never, ever let you know what my actual fees were and that I was trying to help you. Well, she said, I don't care. I've reported you to the attorney general and to your board. That was a kick in the gut. And uh, fortunately, we didn't have a law against that in our state at that time. But here's the bigger, bigger takeaway. Nothing about that looks right in the eyes of a patient. There's just no way to put the lipstick on that pig, as, as we say in the South. Yeah. So it made me start looking at why can Blue Cross, Aetna, and Cigna all pay us a different fee for the exact same service, and we can't have a different fee. So as I did my research, I had a couple of uh, healthcare attorneys that were on the Board of Health with me at that that time. Uh, We found out about the DMPO model, which is a discount medical plan organization. We're actually regulated by the Department of Insurance in most all of the states. And it is a model where we, you can, if you're a chiropractor, part of our network, we got about, we've had about 7,000 doctors in it now, 1.3 million patients are part of it. And it's a network that the patients pay 49 bucks for the year. It covers them and their family. And you can absolutely have a different fee for your cash, your underinsured people with limited benefits. Think about the Medicare patients. It only co- Medicare only covers the adjustment. And if you're not charging your actual fees for your exams, your x-rays and therapies, and you're giving discounts, it's called an inducement. Right. And it can be considered a kickback. So pardon my French, but if you want all that bull crap to go away, you use the discount medical plan. You can bill whatever insurance allows when it's available, but you also keep care affordable for families. Uh, you can even have a family plan where the first member pays X amount of dollars, second you know, and we have doctors trying to do that to help family. So it's the legal way, the most compliant way to offer discounts. As a matter of fact, we call it having a profitable discount strategy, yeah. which sounds like an oxymoron, but it isn't. No, no. And, and it's so it's important. You know, way. Listen, it's so important because, you know, I mean, let's face it. I mean, it, it, what people don't know 
is that you can have your next door neighbor come in or somebody comes in and they can't afford the care. I'll tell you, I know the laws are different in different states. I know that. But, you know, the state, one of the states I practiced in, you had to have them sign an affidavit. They had the, you had to be able to prove that they couldn't pay, um, you know, your right. usual and customary fees, you know, all this stuff. And I think it's ingenious, man, you know, to be able to now they just can sign up and for the year and you yeah. can charge them whatever your fees are, your discounted fees and you're, you're compliant. You can That's practice true. without thinking about anything, right? And not worried about someone coming to giving you a kick in the gut and, uh, and you're good. You know, one of the things I, I stress to doctors, it, and, and this has to do with anything in your practice, is if you're doing anything in your practice that you would want to change if an insurance investigator or auditor came in to see you, fix it now. Yeah. Because guess what? They may have or probably I mean, the, you you don't know. So, I mean, if you know you're kind of straddling, yeah, I should clean this up. When do I do it? You know, the reality is it it's real easy to get identified, if you will, as as doing as doing things wrong. And the reality is, you just don't have to do that anymore. I mean, like right. I said, we've been around since right. out eight. It's vetted. It's you know, it is the simplest and most compliant way to stay out of trouble and still be able to help your patients. Yeah, and you know, and and I think the other reality that we need to talk about just for three seconds is that these are doctors who just want to help people. They do, you know. I mean, it's not like we're looking. People people don't discount their fees to rip people off. They discount their fees because they want to make chiropractic care or any kind of care affordable, so that people yeah. can 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 be able to receive the care. But in today's day and age, how do you? you know, take that lowest fee and, you know, be able to live on that and pay your staff and do everything else you can't. So, you know, I hear you. And I love what you said, because Aetna, Blue, all these people, if they're, if you're in the insurance game, they're all paying different fees and yeah, they can yeah. legally do that, you know? Crazy, crazy. Well, thank you, man. And thank you for what you set up with Cairo Health USA. Well, it'll be flashed on the bottom so people can get a, get a look at that. But, um, Let's talk about EOS, man. When you when you talk sure. about that at the at the beginning, Ray, you know, it just was so beautiful. And uh, in my mind, I don't know who the guy is that wrote the book. It's always going to be you. No way. <laughs> I'm going to identify it with you, my my new All software right. update. So <laughs> so talk about it. Talk about you know sure. the entrepreneurial operating system. Yeah, well, like I said, it's a book written by Gino Wickman called Traction. Uh, there's a couple of uh, sequels to it. <clears throat> but I, I will tell you, Ron, that if I wasn't a chiropractor or I didn't have Cairo Health USA, I would be teaching EOS. They're actually certified instructors in the entrepreneurial operating system. And I will tell you that in my practice and early days of Cairo Health USA, <clears throat> I was always putting out fires. And as it turned out, I was a freaking arsonist. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because, you know, I'd come in on a Monday morning and I got this great idea. And on by Wednesday, I had another great idea and all these great ideas and nothing ever happened. Or I was always struggling with, you know, this employee isn't working out or they were working out and then they weren't. And, you know, it, it is, it's the ongoing problem that every doctor has had in hiring, retaining the right people. And so the EOS system looks at any business, whether it's chiropractic practice, chiro health, even your own family to, to a certain extent. And there are certain core things that you've got to look at. You got to look at your data. What's the vision of your company? You know, what are the, you know, the analytics that you look at? Uh, what values, what core values and do you have when you're hiring? Because what, what I have, what I found over the years is, before we identified our purpose, our cause, and our passion, and our core values, it was chaos. We didn't have clarity on who we were, what we were doing, how we were going to operate. And so part of that EOS process, we use what's called an integrator, which is someone who's trained in helping bring this into a business. And it literally... It literally helps you organize your business and look at those key indicators or those key areas, your vision, your data, uh, your marketing strategy, everything that you do in the business. And you make sure nothing falls off the plate and you make sure that things get done. So think of it like 
the software on your computer. It literally ends up programming your business, if you will, to operate highly efficient. So what we did in at uh, in, in Cairo Health is we did come up with our 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 purpose, cause, and passion, which is, you know, our purpose, cause, and passion is to improve the quality of lives for the doctors, their teams, their patients, and our teams, and then our core values. There's five of them. I'll read them off. Face each day with passion and enthusiasm, live with personal and professional integrity, always be a first responder, do the right things for the right reasons in the right ways, and be exceptional in every encounter. In everything we do, if it doesn't fit that or our purpose, cause, and passion, we don't do it. Love and it. I can, the, uh, uh, an amazing difference um, just in hiring and firing. Yeah. And, and, and I hear the doctors talk about, well, I fired three CAs last year. And I'm going, you idiot. You didn't train them. Yeah. They didn't turn out well because you didn't put the time in with them. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or you didn't hire the right people to begin with. And, and that's because they weren't aligned with, you know, or there was no, there, not, not even aligned. There was no guideposts, you know, it, it, it's so interesting when you look at successful businesses right now, a lot of people don't know this Costco, um, you know, or a price club or, you know, what, you know, they became Damn. Costco, right? Costco, they, they, they came up with their, their 13 key, metric points that they use right and same kind of a deal it's got to be a certain size it has to have a certain feel to it it has to have a certain price point to it you know 17 percent over wholesale all these different things shelf space they got to look at all these different things and if it doesn't fit those it doesn't come in the store you know yep and they're strong on it, you know, and, and and other look at other places, too. You know, I'm, I, I'm sure if we looked at like Chick-fil-A and and other really successful oh, yeah. places, they all got, you know, they're not going to go, OK, today we're going to sell pizza or we're going to we're now we're going to sell whatever. They all kind of do that, you know, and, and it's so cool. And then if they choose to start branching out, they can. It's not like you're stuck. Right. You know, Starbucks started off as just a coffee place and then they started adding food in, you know, as they went along, you know, but. It's just amazing, you know, Ray. I think it's so cool, and having the purpose, you know, and the passion, you know. Well, one of, one of the biggest things uh, that it did for us, you know, I, when I used to interview people, we would interview them about their skills and their experience. And what I learned through that EOS system is, there's not a lot that goes on in a chiropractic office that you can't teach someone. Yeah. So when you stop hiring just based on skill set and what their history has been, and you start looking at not who people are, but who they can become, and then start looking at um, hiring based on character, on their ethics, work ethics, you get an entirely different employee. Because I've, I've hired, like in the past, medical billers from medical practice. Not a good fit. There, it's a, it's a, it's a different world. But when you hire someone, and it's okay to hire people that have got experience, but you've got to, you've got to get those character issues, their ability to play well with others. There, you know, making sure that, and and this is an exercise within the EOS. It's called GWC, where you actually evaluate employees. Do they get it? Do they understand their job? Do they want it? You know, is there the desire and do they have the capacity? And I will tell you that people always don't have all three of those. And so, especially when you onboard a new employee, you got to give them a runway, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, whatever your number is. But, you know, probably by the end of the first two weeks, sure. whether they got it or not. And one one of the, the key things that, that we learned is you got to be slow to hire. But when someone does not fit your culture and, you know, somebody can come in for a great interview run and then they send their crazy brother or sister to come to work. You know, they're, it's like, well, they're, they're, it. yeah, they can't hide. They, they can't hide, hide their crazy for too long. And then once once you see whatever the crazy is, yeah, that's right. It fits in with your crazy or, yeah. you know, just well, not they, good... they always say this. Everybody interviews well. No one's going to. And some people who don't. Yeah. That's probably their best interview, even though it's not yeah. a good interview. But yeah. but yeah, everyone can interview well, or at least you know, good people can you know, or, or people can 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 put that off. But you know, man, once 
once you get on the field and play, you know, it could be a whole different ball game. And yeah, you're exactly right. You were going to say hire slow and fire fast, right? Well, well, slow to hire, quick to fire. And that yeah. doesn't mean, you know, if they make one little no, no, no. mess up. But here's the other thing that we learned from this. I owe it to my other team members to make sure that I am surrounding them with the best people that I can find. And, and, and everyone that I ever hired that I've hired, I think in my history, I've had this conversation with them. I want to make sure that this is the best job you have ever had. And they look at me like, I've never had anybody say that. And I said, well, it's completely selfish on my part because if I'm making the best job you've ever had, I don't have to worry about turnover. I don't have to worry about you showing up. I don't have to, you know, it eliminates so many problems. That was my way of not being the arsonist yeah. in my totally practice. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, the other piece around that, too, is like invest in them, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and listen, they're investing in you, especially in the in the EOS, right? They're They're investing in you. You know, they're part of the purpose. You know, they've got the passion. They've got the cost. You know, it. It, or they can grow into that, you know, but investing in them and not just in, not just in the workplace, you know, like, like, oh, like, yeah, like what are they doing and what's their passion and, and, you know, and, and being able to help them reach their goals, you know, whether, whether it's a health goal or whether it's an exercise goal or whatever it is, they want to buy a house, whatever it is, being able to help them and coach them, you know, because if we really care about them, listen, no one's better at caring about our business than the people who work for us, but we got to care about them, right? Yeah, it, yeah. The, the, uh, I think the saying is, if you take care of, their, of your people, they'll take care of your business. And and I have I've certainly found that. You know, I mean, I know you know Christy. Yeah. I don't know if you know her story, but I hired Christy at nine thirty on a Sunday night on Craigslist. I'd never been on before, but we had just started Cairo Health, and I needed somebody to help with paperwork, and. You know, that's what she was hired for. And now here she is. She speaks internationally. She's my, you know, I always tell folks, I, I always thought I needed a clone. Little did I know my clone would wear a skirt, you know? <laughs> yeah, her son's going to be a chiropractor, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, she's just so passionate about chiropractic and passionate about about life, you know? And, you know, the, so the other thing that you talked about, you know, and it's so true. You know, we can train people to do to do to do metrics and to do different you know different functions. You know, but you can't train a lot of times heart. You can't train oh. passion. You can't train you know service. You know, I always say this. You know, I could take a servant and turn them into a business person, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's real difficult to take a business person and turn them into a servant. You know, you're, it, you're yeah, you're you're right. Uh, I, I like the term a servant leader. Yeah. You know, because, and I have certainly found this to be true. Whenever I do invest in employees, and we do a lot, I mean, in a lot of different areas that have nothing to do with our business, because the better they are at home, they're happy, they're content. It, it just makes for a better life for them. And, and it really is, you know, I, Whatever I do for them, I get back tenfold. Yeah. No, it just, it, it just, uh, we talked about Zig, Zig Ziglar earlier. Probably the thing that has impacted me the most over my life is something Zig said. You can have anything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. Yes. Um, and, and I mean, that, that's just kind of my, my, my motto and, and it has proven to be true for me for sure. You know, Ray, there's a book and I have to tell you, I read it when I, when I first got out in practice, someone gave it to me. This was back in 1981. It's called university of success. I want to say Og Mandino put it together, but it's, there's, it, it's literally a thick book. It's like, you know, but it's meant to read a chapter a night, which might be about five to 10 pages. And there's freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. And every chapter is written by a different person or multiple times. They might have different chapters, but Zig Ziglar, Og Mandino, all these people. And it was, and it's all about that. You know, it's all about, you know, the, the key, the secret, everyone's looking for the secret sauce. And the truth is the secret sauce to successful businesses is within us, you know, and it really yeah. is. It's the operating system. I, that's what I love about the, about EOS, you know, cause it really is the operating system that, that yeah. we got to look at a operating system, you know, it's just, it's beautiful, man. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and, uh, um, 
I would listen, we're running out of time, but I, I just got something I want to go into because you told me about this earlier before we got on the on the on the webcast uh, before I hit the record button. And I'm so enamored with what you said. I'm just I want to know a little bit more about Cairo AI. OK, Cairo, um, it's Cairo, Cairo AI. Yes. So think of artificial intelligence with a chiropractic education and perspective. So uh, my, my good friend and, and uh, colleague, Johan Marin, who work, has worked for us for 10, 15 years, he, anything you ever see in print, the Cairo Health logos, the image, the, every, everything about us um, is a result of he, he's our marketing guy. He's our graphics guy. And he decided he wanted to launch Cairo AI. And, and we did what we always do. We looked at it through the lens. Does this help improve the quality of life for our doctors, their teams, our teams, their patient? It absolutely does. So we invested in it. And so think of like chat GPT, but we had the ability to load it with chiropractic information from a lot of the best consultants in the profession, billing, coding, Medicare. So it, it is a tool. It doesn't take the place of anyone, but it is, it is a great tool. And so one of the, uh, ways that doctors can, and by the way, it's free. Just go to our website or go to Cairo AI and you should be able to find it. Um, and it's like using chat GPT. You enter the questions, you refine the questions and it keeps spitting out answers. Anybody that's ever tried to write a, a, a reactivation email or a social media post, there's nothing worse than a blank piece of paper. Yeah. So with Cairo AI, you can li I literally sit down and said, Write me a series of 10 social media posts about the benefits of chiropractic for uh, pregnant mothers. And holy crap, Ron, 15 <laughs> seconds. It's got the outline. What's really interesting about it is, let's say that we're going to write a social media post about neck pain or back pain. You can literally tell Cairo AI, write this in the voice or write this in such a way that it appeals to men. Write it in a way that it appeals to women. Write it in a way that appeals to the elderly. And it literally can begin, it, it will bring you back answers. Different words are used by older people than there are younger people. And so if, you're, if your social media posts aren't working, aren't getting clicks, or aren't getting appointments, Figure out who your avatar is, your target audience, and then ask Kyra AI to write something in that voice. So you can use it for social media posts. You can use it for emails, for reactivations, basic questions about coding or billing, um, interview questions, just like we talked about. How do, how do you interview someone to find out what their character and integrity is versus what their skills are? Um, writing onboarding plans for new employees. You know, tell them what all they need to learn, and it literally will will help you flesh that out. Um, I, I I can't believe how much we've used. We've developed it for the profession, but I can't tell you how much we use it internally now. Yeah. Uh, it, it it it. If you haven't delved into it, please do. Um, it, it it can literally help with so many different tasks that you have within the office. Um, so anyway, that that's why we did it, and and we are still learning what all it can do. Disclaimer: It is not a legal resource. You know, right. we always tell people to, to to verify this with your attorney if it's a legal question and that, and that type thing. But um, it has really helped streamline a lot of the day to day operations that 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 we have within Cairo Health. And there's just so many different ways to, to 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 utilize it within a practice. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you. Hey, Ray. You know, I I know there's going to be more things that come down the pipeline from uh, from Jackson, just outside Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I I just love all the things that you're doing, and thank you for Cairo Health. Uh, I don't think our people, our viewers, or I don't think many people in the profession know how much you invest back into the profession in Cairo Health. You know, every year you bring a student. I know one of my students was last year, you know, yep. uh, won, the, won an award. It was they got $25,000 and the college got 25000 or twenty, whatever it was. I mean, the money that you, you know, it's it, you're just making chiropractic better. And well, and I, I just want to thank you, you know, really well, from I, the bottom of my heart. 
I, I, I really appreciate that. Everything that I have good in life is because of chiropractic, and I, and I don't look at giving back as an option. I look at it as an obligation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and that's what we've done from 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 day one. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I had Kent, uh, Kent Greenwald, you know, who, you know, very well. And we did, we did a podcast about uh, with one of our, one of our life was leadership lines. And uh, it was titled, you can't, I believe something like you can't serve yourself into poverty, you know, um, you just, true. you know, you just can't. So thank you. And thank you for, for all that you're doing for the profession. And, uh, and just, just know that, that, uh, that I appreciate you and the profession appreciates you. And, and so to our viewers, thank you, man. Thank you for coming day in and day out, week in and week out. You know, we drop these Life West Leadership Lines uh, every other week, the opposite weeks. My wife and I uh, do the Life by Life West. I know it's cross-mixed and people, you know, watch them both. But thank you. And thank you for sharing, you know, because the the biggest way that we get the word out on these uh, webcasts right now are through you sharing them. And I just appreciate it so much. That's what Ray said today. I and mean, we dropped a bunch of pearls of, you know, of wisdom. Them and you know, just having someone even see EOS, you know, maybe they're struggling in business and just need to recalibrate, whatever it might be, but um, or learn about you know, Cairo uh, AI or or Cairo Health, you you know, USA, whatever it is, you know, just I appreciate you and and you know, from Life West and our family, uh, we truly uh, are really about creating servant leaders and it starts with you know with all of us in the profession so all that we're doing is amazing and and making a huge impact on humanity so thank you um until i come back at you next time for dr ray and myself we're going to bid you adieu and just keep you know loving people around you and you know keep sharing chiropractic and keep letting people know that they are much more powerful, much more than they were ever led to believe. Until next time, for Dr. Ray and I, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.